Hello everyone. Welcome to LICD Lecture 16C. Today we are going to analyze the non-inverting Smith trigger uh, using OPAMS with the help of quizzes. Last time we have evaluated with the help of numbers, as you can see in the left hand side of your screen. So non and let's start. So circuit, uh, I we can analyze this. Uh, this circuit also is the one and the same. So the circuit over here is same. Uh, only thing is here we have put some numbers. So let us concentrate on that. So the first point is the circuit uses positive feedback. Yes, it does via resistor R2. Uh, that is the voltage divider network consisting of R1 and R2. It backs a part of output voltage to the non-inverting terminal. Yes, correct. Let us assume that uh, here we are uh, stating that. Let me increase the form. What is it? Yeah. So let us assume that V out is at minus negative saturation level, minus V sat initially. And V in is increasing from zero. Actually, that's what we have started with uh, number uh, analysis with numbers also in the previous lecture. So these are the assumptions which, which we will start. So output voltage V out is at negative saturation and V in is increasing from zero volts. Now we apply the KCL at node V plus. So here is my node V plus. So what it says I1 is equal to uh, I2 plus I plus. Now I plus is the current flowing into the op-amp terminal which is zero because of its high input impedance. So what we will get I1 will be V in minus V plus upon R1. And uh, what will be I2? I2 will be V plus minus V out upon R2. So that's what we get. So we will, uh, let me expand it a little, yeah. So we can club the terms of V plus together and V in and V out on the right hand side. And we cross multiply and after simplification, we'll get this very important equation number one which says V plus is equal to R2 upon R1 plus R2 into V in plus R1 upon R1 plus R2 into V out. So this is equation number one. Now from the circuit, uh, step number four says that VID, that is a differential input voltage is given by V plus minus V minus. So over here V minus, you can see it is connected to the ground, real ground. So V minus is zero. So VID will be V plus only. So a very important also fact is in the step number five is the output of a comparator. Basically, it's a comparator with positive feedback, which is comparing V plus and V minus. The comparator output will shift or will uh, you know switch the state from one saturation level to another saturation level whenever VID is approaching zero. That means whenever V uh, in this case, whenever we are saying that uh, V plus is approaching zero. So from equation number one, what is the equation number one? Uh, we can show it over here. This is my equation number one. So from equation number one, uh, my v, uh, output state will change when V plus is approaching zero. So we can substitute V plus in place of V plus, we can substitute zero. So zero is equal to this R2 upon R1 plus R2 into V in plus R1 upon R1 plus R2 into V out. So from here, we can see that the denominator will cancel out and finally we get the equation which is there in the red box. Equation number two, which is given by V in is equal to minus R1 upon R2 into V out. So that's what we will get over here. Okay, so now the input voltage V in triggers or changes the state of the output voltage V out every time it exceeds a certain voltage level known as the upper threshold point and the lower threshold point. So definitely it will do that. Uh, let me just show you the input output waveforms over here like this. Okay, so in this earlier uh, earlier with numbers, we have considered that uh, R1 was 10K, R2 was 20K. So this was half basically. And V out is basically 15. We have considered to be 15. So V in was around half of 15 minus 15. So this is 7.5 minus 7.5. So here is that level, you know, minus 7.5. And whenever it was plus my minus V sat, this became as uh, minus half into minus 15. So that V in became a 7.5. So that's how we got this plus or minus 7.5 with respect to earlier, earlier analysis with numbers. So what again I repeating, whenever V in, Changes the V in changes the state of the output every time it exceeds a certain voltage level 
known as upper threshold point so in this case 7.5 is upper threshold point and uh, minus 7.5 is lower threshold point so let's see now whenever point number 7 whenever v out is at minus v sat so whenever v out is at minus v sat means minus of no here value of v in required to shift or switch the output from minus v sat to plus v sat is called as upper threshold point so this is that upper threshold point so again i repeat whenever v out is equal to minus v sat the value of v in required to shift or uh, uh, switch the output state from minus v sat to plus v sat is known as upper threshold voltage or v utp so basically what is the formula of v utp it is the same as your formula number 2 but right now v in will be called as v utp so at this point my v out is also minus v sat so in this formula from equation number 2 how it get to equation number 3 so v in became uh, v utp that is one threshold level so v utp will be equal to minus of r1 upon r2 into minus v sat so in earlier example r1 and r2 was 10k and 20k so this was half and v sat was uh, 15 so minus of uh, half into minus of 15 that will be 7.5 hence we can say that this 7.5 is nothing but your v utp that is the upper threshold voltage now the point number 8 as long as the input v in is less than v utp my output stays at minus v sat so it is very evident from this waveform as long as the v in is uh, less than this 7.5 my output stays at minus 15 as you can see whenever v in becomes greater than v utp my output will, will be at plus v sat and it will remain at plus v sat now output is at plus v sat right now the value of the input v in required to switch the output from plus v sat to minus v sat is called as lower threshold point okay so right now the output was plus v sat so the value of input required to switch the output from plus v sat to minus v sat is called as lower threshold point again we come back to equation number 2 so now v in becomes v ltp and right now the output is at plus v sat so that's how we got this equation number 4 so v ltp will be minus of r1 upon r2 into plus v sat so if we put some numbers r1 was 10k r2 was 20k in the earlier example so and uh, v sat was 15 so it is minus half into 15 minus 7.5 hence we say that this minus 7.5 was not but this lower triggering point or lower threshold point or v ltp so now as long as v in is greater than minus uh, this v ltp output will remain at minus uh, uh, here it is a mistake uh, no it is proper actually whenever v in is greater than v ltp meaning over here v in is greater right so v in is greater means in a negative side this minus 2 is greater than minus 7.5 right in this way so when v in goes below 0 it becomes negative so minus of v in becomes greater than uh, you know uh, you know it's minus uh, this v ltp output will remain at plus v sat so over here we can see that okay whenever v in becomes output will stay at plus v sat so here it is plus v sat fine so whenever uh, whenever v in becomes less than uh, v utp so v in becomes less than this v ltp output will be at minus v sat again in the next half cycle again when the input crosses the v uh, utp level again the output will switch from plus v sat uh, minus v sat to plus v sat and the entire process will repeat so that's how the wit equations we can justify this thing uh, we can understand the example of these numbers the significance of using the numbers so over here now we'll come back to the hysteresis So hysteresis is a technique of forcing the output of regenerative comparator. Basically, regenerative comparator is nothing but my Schmidt trig. Regenerative comparator to switch at two different input levels, but one is V UTP and V LTP. So these two switching levels, V UTP and LTP, are automatically produced by the positive feedback network R1 and R2. Okay. So this was the diagram which we were concentrating on. till so far right this is my v uh, utp and this is my v ltp this is my plus v sat and minus v sat we have seen that using numbers these were the values correct so 
this was 7.5 was VUTP minus 7.5 was VLTP plus 15 was plus VSAT and minus 15 was minus uh, VSAT. So here also the working is very, very clear. These are my input output, general input output waveforms, uh, which will be valid for any UTP and any LTP point. So this is my uh, waveforms for the non-inverting Smith trigger. Now let's go to the hysteresis curve. We will also go to the hysteresis curve over here also. We have seen that in the analysis of uh, uh, where is my yeah here is my hysteresis curve right. So this hysteresis curve explains that again in working in short. So whenever V in is uh, less than V UTP, my output is at minus V sat over here. And whenever V in becomes greater than V UTP, output is at plus V sat. Again, whenever V in is less than V LTP, my output is at minus V sat. And whenever V in is greater than V LTP, my output will remain at plus V sat. So basically between V UTP and V LTP, my output state will not change. It is in the dead band condition. So the following are the observations from the hysteresis curve. So when V in is between V UTP and LTP, my output of the uh, Smith trigger is a constant either at plus Vsat or minus Vsat. So that means the output will not switch over, over here. The amount of hysteresis is defined by the difference between the two triggering voltages. So this uh, width over here, VUTP minus VLTP is called as hysteresis voltage. Or we call it as a width of hysteresis. So over here, uh, let me just increase it. Yeah. So point number three says that the hysteresis voltage VH is given by V U T P minus V L T P. V U T P is minus of R1 upon R2 into minus V sat, and V L T P is minus of R1 upon R2 into plus V sat. Okay, and we know that plus or minus V sat are opposite in magnitude, but uh, sorry, same in magnitude but opposite in uh, sign. So both are same in magnitude, so we can write R1 upon R2 into plus V sat minus of minus V sat. Right, so that becomes twice. So V H is twice of R1 upon R2 in plus V sat. So this is the formula for my hysteresis voltage. So as long as the noise voltage is less than this hysteresis voltage, my output state will not change and it will eliminate the false triggering due to noise. That's why the circuit which converts any regular shaped waveform to a square wave or a pulse is called as a Smith trigger. So this is my Smith trigger, hysteresis curve, my input output waveforms and the circuit diagram. So in today's lecture, we have analyzed the non inverting Smith trigger using equations. We have also seen the input output characteristics. We have seen the concept of VUTP and VLTP, that is the upper side triggering point and the lower triggering point. And we have also seen the hysteresis curve. That's it for today's lecture. Uh, next lecture, we'll see one. Uh, we will design a non-inverting Smith trigger using OPAM. Until then, have a good day and thank you.